Hey y'all, it's Andrew Couch here, and this Tiger Tuesday video, we're going to be starting a new series on our Shiny. So I, a lot of you guys have, have been asking me to make more videos on our Shiny, and like my Tidyverse series, I wanted to make a Shiny series where it goes over, you know, the basics of our Shiny, um, which is more catered towards beginners. Um, I've already made a few videos on our Shiny, such as like Flex Dashboard versus Shiny Dashboard, um, Shiny Modules. So I'm not going to really... Uh, mention or touch those topics since I've already made a few videos on it. Additionally, I noticed uh, I, one of the commenters wanted me to make a video on like the Golem framework. Um, and I'd like to do that, but after reading all the documentation and on the actual development, um, I think that Golem is too big of a concept for a single video and it would be better as a, its own series. So I'm not really going to touch over um, Golem. Um, but I am going to focusing uh, for this video on uh, the actual filter mechanisms to help you um, add some more interactiveness in your dashboard. So right now I have this simple little um, shiny dashboard since that's my preferred framework. And uh, let's actually run the app and show you guys what it is. So I created this one page which will show basically all of the available filters that you can use in our shiny. There are a few things that I removed just because they were kind of redundant, but these are the main type of filters we're going to use uh, when we're going to develop a dashboard. So right here, it's like a little checkbox, um, some radio buttons, a little select input, um, a numeric input where you can like type a number or kind of like uh, click on it, a text input so we can type stuff, um, a little slider, um, a date, a date range, and a file input. So for me, when I was actually looking at our shiny, I noticed that, you know, a lot of these filters um, that we are, that are available aren't really used a lot. So for, for example, this type of checkbox, it's not something that I really see a lot in a dashboard, but if you're going to create your own little like survey, you know, that could be a really helpful. Um, as for file input, um, I'm actually going to do that for our next video over um, action buttons and file handling. So uploading, being able to upload a file and also being able to download a file from your shiny dashboard. Instead, I feared that I would make a video basically showing out how to use, you know, common filters that we'd actually typically see in a shiny dashboard. Um, and in that case, we're, we're going to use the select filter or the kind of the drop down filter, a slider filter, a little date filter. So like after date or before date, and then also a date range filter. So the, so we're going to basically be using this one, um, this one, this one, and that one. Okay. So what's kind of cool about this dashboard is you can see all the examples of the actual filters. We have our checkbox, radio buttons, etc. And then we also have our actual plots uh, right here for the uh, separate uh, tab. So when I'm actually building a dashboard and I'm trying to envision how I'm going to use the interactiveness for each chart, I generally will do some pre-filtering as like a little hard coded or fixed variable. So for the select example, um, since it's going to be a drop down, we're probably going to select, you know, the three species and filter that. So right now I already have the species filtered to Satosa, which is pretty useful, but let's start actually creating our filtering. So this right here is where we're going to put it, create a little box. And in this case, since we're going to use the um, select input for the select example, we're just going to type in the select input. Our input ID will always be like, I don't know. I always call it like V select. Our label will be species, right? And then we can choose our choices. So for our choices, we know that we're going to be using the Iris example. So if we look at right here, Iris, we have all of these things and we have our species right there. One way that we can kind of isolate the species is we can do a like a, a like a unique and then iris uh, species and it'll show us right here you know the species that we would want to have as our available choices so i'm just going to put that right there and then finally what we can do is type in like our selected variable so this is like our pre-selected variable and we're just going to say setosa additionally um you have another option with the select input so if we go right here 
we can see we have multiple um in this case it doesn't really make any sense that we would want to do multiple um and then you have like a select ties which i'm actually not very familiar with that i think that's just i guess it's just like a ui thing so i'm good with just that um and then also what i'm going to do is i'm going to make the width of the box uh six okay so let's run that let's see our filter and then we can see right here we have our three species okay um so let's actually use this filter and to reuse filters what we want to realize is that this in our ui is our input so this variable that we called it our, our uh, input id is going, call, is going to be called v select okay and what we can do is basically replace where our variable is going to be so in this case since v select is going to represent a species we can replace our you know hard-coded satosa with input v select okay and then we can just run the app and if we change it it should be versicolor right so change that virginica satosa etc okay so that's basically how we do it right there um there are definitely definitely some ways we can uh change it so instead of just filtering to that specific species we could also say like we could do like a mutate or like a little flag um, and stuff like that. Um, I think we could probably even do a subtitle, right? And paste in the input v select. Oops. And I, sh I think it should put the, uh, um, yeah, the, the species. So we can have that right there too, if we were, you know, to make it a little bit more custom and then remove the species right there. But um, as you can see, filtering with the general select input is very straightforward. Um, definitely a good little trick is using the unique iris and then the little dollar sign to select the column. So it's way less code. You don't have to use pipes, uh, which makes it a little bit cleaner. Okay. So let's do our next example, which will be the slider example. And with the slider example, we're going to be using our slider input. So slider input. I'm just going to call it the slider label will be. Um, let's see what we're going to call it. So in the slider example, I guess I'm just saying, um, we're going to be finding, uh, we're going to be plotting out, um, the, the flowers with a sepal length less than the, the variable. We're just going to call this uh sepal length. It sepal length. Okay. And then what we have are some options, which will be min is equal. And then we'll have a little max. And then our value, which would be one, zero, and our step, which would be zero. And then we'll say our width is four. And in this case, we're actually going to change it. So in this case, I want to do iris uh, sepal length. And then max iris sepal length. Our value, let's just say, I don't know, the median. And our step will be, I don't know, like zero point. Five. Okay, let's run it. And we can see we have our little sepal length right there and we can change it. Okay, so that's good and dandy. Um, again, and with our V slider variable, we can kind of just go over here and then type in our input V slider, save it. Right. And then we can see how we have our sepal length right there. And if we change it to like 4.3, we can see it's filtering out. So it's only showing Satosa, open it back up, etc. Yeah, pretty cool. Pretty quick way to uh, um, add some functionality to your chart. Okay, so the next uh, few uh, filterings is some date filters. And I think date filters are probably something that you would use more often. Um, so let's actually get into it. And there's two types of date filters, a, a simple date input, which will just show a single date and then a date range input, which is going to be like a start and an end date. So again, you know, date input, um, it's got just, it's just one simple date, date range input. You're going to give it a range of stuff and we'll see how we can call date range input and how it differs from the original date input. So let's actually do it. 
Um, so we'll say date input and we'll call it V date. Our label will be, I guess, date and our value will be something where we kind of need to figure out what our value should be. Um, in that case, we want to look at the actual charts that we're looking at, um, which is the economics data set. Um, if we actually look at the economics data set, you know, it's just doing it by each, uh, by a year and month. So it's a bunch of monthly data. Um, in this case, you know, since it's saying 1980, uh, the beginning of the eighties, we'll just do that first. So as dot date is, oops, copy that in. And, um, that's basically it for that. Uh, we have to do some min. So min is equal to, you know, it's, we can just say, uh, 1900, 1900, and their max will be, uh, let's say a 2020, uh, 2020 as dot date, 2020, 0101. And then we'll actually add our width in, which will be, uh, what is it, six? Yeah, it should be six. Gotta change that back to six. We'll run that. And we can see we have our little date. We can select that. What's cool is you can kind of go into the month and then also to the years. So as you can see, it's pretty interesting. You also, I think, can type in stuff, right? That. Um, but let's actually start putting in our uh our date so right here we'll just say input v date right and nothing crazy really happened uh right there so right now it's after the 80s and then we can change it say um let's do um i don't know the, the 90s right there and you can see it filters to the 90s um, I think you can still do, you can also do it as the, uh, um, um, the way we were doing it as like more of a dynamic approach. So if we want to say, let's, let's actually try this out. Cause I'm pretty sure it'll work, but you never know. Let me, uh, men economics date. Yeah. And then we can say as dot date men, men economics date. Yeah. So maybe we could actually make this a little bit more, um, you know, a little bit more programmatic. So let's just do that. And then let's just do, uh, that. Max. All right. So then we still have it. Cool. Okay. So we have our, our date. Uh, filter and now let's actually do the date range filter. So box um, date range input. We'll say v uh, date range label will be date range. Okay, our start. Um, we'll just uh, yeah, let's let's just copy that in. You know, we'll do a uh, min. We'll put this thing in there and just replace this with start and end. I think that should be it. And then we got to put a little comma. Um, and yeah, so we have that start and, uh, yeah, let's run that. See if that works. And we have our date filter. And I need to check. Yeah, min is that. Okay, so now let's actually use our date range filter. And there's a little th thing that's a little bit more interesting with the date range is that when we do input date range, uh, obviously we're going to do like a input date range. Um, we need to figure out like which one's the start and which one's the end. In this case, the start will be uh, the, uh, or the min value or the start value is the first item. And then the end value, end value is the, um, the, the second item. So let's run that. Right. So 1967, in this case, let's do, uh, uh, let's do, uh, let's do like the 1980s. 
January 1st, we have that. In this case, you know, maybe want to just do a short little time series analysis of like, um, you know, the nineties to, right. So we have right here, um, that little filtering option. Cool. And yeah, so that's it kind of for the basic filters. Um, a lot of times what you want to do is kind of, um, uh, program the data, understand your min and max. Um, obviously with the date ranges, it, 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 uh, matters more on the context of the problem. And then also having the steps and stuff like that. Um, you, you know, you can do, um, some filtering or some, uh, some, uh, um, programming. So you're like, you know, the max minus min divided by 10 and round that, um, stuff like that. But, um, all in all, uh, using filters, just understanding, you know, what to put into using some, you know, base R functions and calling, um, the specific column makes the code look a little bit easier and something that I, um, you know, I, I, I kind of uh, had problems with because I was still stuck in the idea that everything needs to be in a, a tidyverse format. Um, when in reality, this stuff, this nested stuff makes it look a little bit cleaner um, when you're writing a uh, dashboard or developing dashboard. So let's see the final dashboard. Right here are all our filters. And then here are our original filters that we have now. And we can change that. And obviously now we can add these filters together, um, right? So we, if we want to add, um, we can have multiple uh, different types of filters for each plot. Um, they, they go through the entire dashboard, so they're available for the entire dashboard. So it's nothing, um, there's no real rules against it as long as they meet the same data types. Additionally, um, your actual date inputs, they don't have to be inside that little page. You can put them in the sidebar too as well. Um, you can kind of put them anywhere, um, stuff like that. Uh, one of the things that we would probably want to think about is if we are going to different pages, we would probably want different types of filters, right? Um, and that's where we can go into more dynamic dash, uh, sidebars. And that will be for the next, uh, video where I'm going to be focusing more on, you know, using file handling, um, using action buttons, um, and, uh, dynamic variables. Uh, and also having dynamic sidebar options. So um, it's definitely going to be less filter um, heavy and more on, you know, how to add a little bit more interactiveness, a little bit more uh, um, advanced stuff um, to add a little bit more um, um, detail into your dashboard and make it a little bit more customizable. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it was pretty quick, but I think this is pretty simple. Um, as long as you kind of get a brief example of all of the um, ways to use the dashboard, uh, slider inputs and stuff like that. So I'll see you guys next time and tidy on.